Hello. I don't think anyone could deny that these are strange and challenging times indeed. So much so that I can't work from my normal studio. So, for the next few videos, I hope you'll forgive me not appearing all the way through. That may be a bonus, as much as a drawback, but you'll get my audio and you'll get my normal slides, plus a contact point where you can raise any questions. I hope you still enjoy the videos, and once we're through this crisis, I look forward to rejoining you from the usual spot. Welcome to this Killick Explains Finance video. This week, I want to take on lots of jargon you'll see in the press around how governments are cushioning COVID-19's economic impact and what the likely outcomes could be. No one knows for sure, but I'll give you one or two pointers. So, with no more ado, the background to this is COVID-19 has wreaked havoc on the global economy and it's done so by hitting simultaneously supply and demand. Supply, because factories globally have closed, been unable to operate, workers have lost their jobs, so goods and services are not getting produced. And demand, because consumers and businesses have been retrenching, not buying, not going out and so on. Governments and central banks have therefore acted quickly to try and stave off the impact. How? Now I want to introduce two key bits of jargon to help us along. One is monetary policy or monetary policy measures, and the other is fiscal policy and fiscal policy measures. So what is the key difference between the two? You'll see both terms banded around a lot in the coming months. What's the difference? Well, monetary policy first of all. Now, monetary policy measures have been around some time. The key tools of monetary policy are interest rate cuts and quantitative easing, and these are not new. Interest rate cuts are as old as the hills as a tool. Quantitative easing came in around the time of the financial crisis. Essentially, interest rate cuts are designed to make loans and mortgages cheaper for businesses and consumers. So the idea is you basically encourage people to borrow by making the cost of that borrowing that bit lower as a proportion of their salary, as a proportion of their profits. Quantitative easing, on the other hand, is deliberately increasing the money supply. It's called money printing. And the idea is by increasing the money supply, you basically increases the theory a consumer's propensity to spend that money, but you also simultaneously try and force institutions out of safe haven assets by buying them, if you're the government or central bank, and essentially pushing up the price, squeezing the yield. So it's designed as a stimulative measure, and both of those measures have been around for some time and have been deployed recently and will probably be deployed again. Now, fiscal policy, on the other hand, you don't see fiscal policy measures as often, although they're well documented in economic literature, but essentially this is direct support for consumers and businesses from the government via central banks and so on. So, examples could include um, tax cuts and infrastructure projects paid for by the government, but this time around, the governments around the world have stepped in and said, no, that's not going to work quickly enough or at all, so... We'll consider things like directly handing money out to consumers. That's something that's being deliberated in the US in terms of how that will actually work. And essentially, you've got direct support to businesses in the form of backstopping wages. In some cases, the consideration of direct rescues, government part ownership and so on. So it's quite hands on the fiscal measures that we're seeing. And these are largely unprecedented in both their scope and nature. Now, will it work? There is the billion dollar question, if you want to see it that way, or trillion dollar question. First of all, the big challenge is going to be creating demand where there isn't any or it's falling. It doesn't matter how cheap you make loans, it doesn't matter how much money you throw into the economy. If people are not buying stuff, if they're retrenching, not confident, you've got a problem. Consumers may simply save cash if they're handed it directly rather than spend it or borrow it. Banks may simply hoard QE money rather than giving it out as additional loans. So you've got behaviour to combat if you're a central bank trying to make this work. And basically, the same is true with businesses via QE and furloughing. So a lot of businesses are just jumping on the bandwagon, it seems, and saying, great, we have this opportunity essentially to try and sort of keep our staff, let the government backstop our payroll and try and get through the crisis. Now, you might say that's the objective, but it does create a dependency on governments and central banks, which might be quite hard to break. Other challenges then, and I've hinted at one of these, how will this all be paid for and when? All this largesse from governments and central banks, big question, what's this going to manifest as? Is it going to be some sort of future tax rise? Will government spending be cut back in the future? How's that going to work? 
when will these extreme measures be reversed? And how will they be reversed? If everybody is used to huge government stimulus, at what point do you declare you're going to try and pull some of that back? And we've even got the spectre of inflation. If huge future demand, so if suddenly demand is released, if you like, like a genie out of a bottle, and it hits limited supply because factories haven't got back on their feet and so on, you could even have an inflation spike. Essentially, we're probably looking at de-inflation in the short term, but re-inflation is definitely a possibility. So, there you have it. Monetary measures, fiscal measures, both designed to get us out of the COVID-19 economic disaster zone, if you like. Watch that space in terms of the longer term consequences. Any questions? You've got the usual email address, tim.bennett at killick.com or editor at killick.com. And to watch videos on related topics, killick.com forward slash learn.